The Subin River runs through the commercial center of Kumase and merges with the river Oda downstream at Asago, a rural farming community. It is also the main source of irrigation water for countless vegetable farms in and around the city. There are, however, concerns liquid waste from Ghana's second largest hospital, Kofanochi Teaching Hospital, as well as the four medical reception station military hospital and allied institutions directly enter nearby streams. Scientists at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have detected traces of 12 commonly used antibiotics in Ghana's hospitals in the river and some in vegetables grown along the banks. What I found was that these antibiotics that I looked for were all in the surface water that I looked for. All the 12 were actually found there, almost as literal cyclines. They were all in the surface water and also in the hospital wastewater that I looked for. Now, the world is battling the scourge of antibiotic resistance, where bacteria have become impervious to antibiotics. Now, these agents, uh, when they are used in a way that one is more frequent than the way it is supposed to be, underused, misused, or overused, then you tend to have what we call antimicrobial resistance. In other words, the pathogens, the microbes, develop resistance the usual way they would have responded. So, so they would normally have responded sensitively. That means the person who has the pathogen would recover should that person have had that pathogen we are talking about. But once resistance happens, then clearly the person fails to respond. My name is Emmanuel Kwesi Debra. In this Joy News Hotline documentary, I explore how liquid waste from these hospitals endangers human life. Kwasi Alfred visits the urinal for the fourth time in two hours. He needs concentration to beat a deadline, but the pain accompanying the urination drives him mad. A week ago at a nightclub, I had a one night stand. Gonorrhea, for the second time, has gagged him. First one in the treaty in the hospital, I call pharmacy. The first time I was given an antibiotic by a pharmacist, but I'm not seeing any change after two weeks with this. And so, I've been given doxycycline by the pharmacist. Dr. Alex Usufuri is clinical microbiologist at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Gonorrhea, I'm sure you can imagine, is one condition where people do not openly want to discuss. Therefore, the likelihood is that they will just go to a corner shop, get an antibiotic to try to solve that problem. For the gonorrhea, which is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea, we have to appreciate the fact that it's not every antibiotic that can work on that particular organism. So sometimes you begin to use an antibiotic that really does not cure that. And therefore you continue to use it and use it and use it without seeing improvement. It may be that you may be using an antibiotic that previously was working but because of resistance, you are now not able to cure that disease. Antimicrobial resistance threatens the effective prevention and treatment of diseases caused by bacteria, fungi and viruses. A 2012 to 2013 surveillance on gonorrhea in Ghana found the disease is resistant to ciprofloxacin, penicillin and tetracycline. A World Health Organization report in 2016 
showed 490,000 people developed multi-drug resistant tuberculosis globally. It also indicated drug resistance is beginning to complicate fight against HIV and malaria. Professor Ellis Ousudabo is Dean of the School of Public Health at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The pathogens, the microbes, develop resistance the usual way they would have responded. So, so they would normally have responded sensitively. That means the person who has the pathogen would recover should that person have had that pathogen we are talking about. But once resistance happens, then clearly the person fails to respond. Dr. Bwahin Joe Kennedy is a clinical microbiologist with the Kumasa Center for Collaborative Research. This is a molahintin agar plated with our bacteria that we are testing against antibiotics. The wider the clearance, which we call the zone of inhibition, the more effective the, the antibiotic is against the bacteria. And the smaller, or the absence of zo zones of inhibition, the more resistant or the less effective the antibiotic is against the bacteria. How do bacteria acquire immunity? Bacteria are highly adaptable. They can develop defense mechanism in order to live. Once they come into contact with antibiotics, some are able to survive. The survivors can therefore pass on their genes to other bacteria. Of course, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Humans play a major role in the spread of the phenomenon as certain practices continue to expose many. A 2012 report on self-medication practices with antibiotics among tertiary level students in Accra, Ghana, found 70% of antibiotics self-medication among 600 students interviewed. Antibiotics' common frequency usage was one month interval. A joint study by the Ghana Young Academy and the West Africa Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, University of Ghana, also found abuse and misuse of antibiotics. Female students in senior high schools abuse amoxicillin and amoxiclav, among others. Dr. Presla Kolibiamante is a member of the research team. We um, interviewed 328 students um, across three regions in the country. And we found that um, about 80% of them use antibiotics. Um, of that 328, we had 30% of them using antibiotics every month, which is quite alarming because antibiotics are supposed to be used for treatment of specific um, infections over a specific period of time. So utilizing an antibiotic every month um, constitutes misuse of the drug. We also found that most of them utilize these antibiotics for the treatment of cold and flu. Usually, colds are caused by viruses. So ideally, they don't require treatment by antibacterial because as we said from the beginning, you need an antiviral to treat the common colds. There are a few, or when the cold, you can get a complication which may then require that you use antibiotics because now bacteria have come in. So using antibiotics for colds is one way in which we expose the organisms to the antibacteria without it requiring it. Subsequently, the organisms that survive in the body now may develop resistance against that antibiotic that was used. So the next time you get a cold or possibly a pneumonia, you are going to use that antibiotic, which already the organisms have developed resistance to it. And therefore, if you use that antibiotic, you don't get improvement in condition. 
What about hospitals? A survey conducted in 2017 to determine practices related to antibiotics use found inappropriate use even in hospitals and other health facilities. Inappropriate use may be that the health worker should not have used that drug or should not have prescribed that drug and then he prescribed it. Another way is that he gave a dose that was not up to the required dose. Another way could be he gave a dose that is more than was required, which is overdose. Another way is giving the drug for when it is not needed. Apart from deliberate use of antibiotics, is it possible some are being consumed unknowingly? A 2014 report shows urine of 34 to 70 percent of Ghanaians is contaminated with antibiotics. The antibiotics were found in urine samples several months after people had taken them. Contamination through water and animal consumption have been fingered. Scientists at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have found equal levels of drug-resistant bacteria in humans and poultry. Studies reveal up to 61% resistance in both farm workers and livestock droppings. A major cause is unregulated antibiotics use in animal husbandry. A 2018 research involving examination of local and imported meat sold on Ghanaian markers for antibiotic resistant bacteria confirmed resistance. Dr. Bwahin Joe Kennedy is lead researcher. In Salmonella, if there was high resistance to tetracycline, 100% everything for ciprofloxacin, which is very important in treating our enteric uh, sepsis and bacteremia. 63% of Salmonella was resistant, and to ampicillin, 59%, or more than half. So if yeah, infection due to salmonella originating from the poultry industry. It therefore means that treatment may be very challenging, especially when we don't know the antimicrobial resistant pattern of the isolate that is involved. And in the E. coli and the Klebsiella, up to 36% of all samples, this is up from um, 20% two years ago to 36% is huge, all right? And it was found in, in, the, in the local pottery, it was uh, 44%, and uh, two years ago, that was 21%. In the uh, imported ones, two years ago, it was 11%. Now it is 31%. Located in the center of Ghana, the city of Kumasi, capital of the Ashanti region has a population of about 2 million. It's a home to Ghana's second largest hospital, Kofanochi Teaching Hospital. The facility serves the northern zone of the country and beyond. It attracts patients from as far as Côte d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso. Dr. David Azanu a lecturer at the Kumasi Technical University has been thinking about other forms of exposure for some time now. Hospital wastewater has been on his mind. The quest led him to investigate wastewater from Konfanochi Teaching Hospitals and other health facilities. I come to Kumasi as well as all the hospitals and the, um, the clinics that we have. If you go to them, their wastewater management is an issue that's uh, of a concern. Because you go to a place that all their wastewater goes into a soak away, which means it's buried in there, down to the uh, end. And some places you go, it's like, well, we treat it and go. So I tried, it was difficult for us to, to get some samples from soak away um, drains, which you can't, you, uh, you can't actually go and pick from those, um, those uh, containers. So for a chance, I also tried working with Confanache and also trying with uh, K um, KMST Hospital, where I actually realized that they had uh, wastewater actually going through some drains and I could pick samples from them. And that led me to initiate the story in terms of looking for um, antibiotics in hospital wastewater and also the sewage treatment plants.
Waste generated in healthcare settings include pathological waste, infectious waste, radioactive waste, mercury-containing instruments, pharmaceutical waste, among others. According to the WHO, 85% of such hospital waste are actually non-hazardous. Around 10% are infectious and around 5% are non-infectious but hazardous. According to the standards of clinical waste management in UK hospitals, amongst all the category of biomedical waste, liquid waste pose a serious threat to human health and environment because of the ability to enter water shares, pollute groundwater and drinking water when improperly handled and disposed. At the same time, illegal and unethical reuse of this untreated waste can be extremely dangerous and even fatal in causing diseases like cholera, plague, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, diphtheria, among others. Since the establishment of the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital in 1955, the hospital's wastewater has been channeled through a PVC pipe. It intersects the Fuller Road through Electricity Company of Ghana and Veneer Company joining Kumasa's central sewage line into a treatment plant at Asafo. Ernest Aban is Deputy Public Relations Officer, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. It was purposely for Konfanochi, but along the line, NTC, the military hospital and the residential facilities were all joined in our main sewage line. So along the line, the PDS area, it was truncated because they put up a structure. The wastewater effluence was therefore channeled into a swamp. The effluence close to a washing bay is a nuisance. The stench most times becomes overpowering. In that case, we stop working. Because of the situation, nobody would want to sell food stuff and water here. The effluence after going through the swamp joins the Subin River. The adjoining rivers are Wiwi and Sisan. These rivers supply irrigation water for farms such as Ahinsai Gate and Bomso. Jinyasa Farms, Kakari Farm, Ramsia Farms and Chapatra Farms are also irrigated with Subin River. Dr. Zanu set out to find possible contamination of effluence with antibiotics as part of his PhD at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I realized that um, this issue has occurred or this pipe has broken down for more than 15 years. From my discussion with the person who actually have the farm here, it's like people from the town come to buy the sugar cane. The ones that they sell on the roadside, they, they actually come here to buy the sugar cane and go and um, peel them and sell them on the roadside. And this is actually one of the places that they do buy sugar cane. When there's some scarcity in the, in the town. He picked samples from the effluence and down and upstream of the Subin River and adjoining rivers. Vegetables grown along the river were also picked for the presence of 12 commonly used antibiotics in Ghana. Interestingly, after the investigation, all 12 common antibiotics were found. These antibiotics that I looked for were all in the surface water that I look for. All the 12 were actually found there. Almost as nature as cyclines, they were all in the surface water and also in the hospital wastewater that I uh, look for. Then when I went to the levels, the levels that were found were higher in the hospital wastewater and also in the sewage river as compared to the ones that are in the surface water or the low quality water being used by the farmers for irrigation. Surprisingly, I realized that we find um, some of these antibiotics in the lettuce, um, that, which uh, was a bit uh, interesting to know that we could find ciprofloxacin and also tetrapitopin in the lettuce samples that were actually uh, picked from the from the farms. The observable concentration or amount of antibiotics that can result in antimicrobial resistance is 0.1 microgram per liter.
micrograms is simply one millionth of a gram. Now, in the case of one of the antibiotics, which was found in the river and also the wastewater, ciprofloxacin, 15 microgram per liter was found in the wastewater and 1.2 microgram per liter was found in the river. Now, let's do the math. That means 150 times the amount of ciprofloxacin in the wastewater that can result in antimicrobial resistance and 12 times the amount of the profoxacin in the rivers that can result in antimicrobial resistance. But how is liquid waste treated at Konfanochi Teaching Hospital? Um, according to our environmental officers, all our liquid waste are diluted with the appropriate chlorine materials to rid it off of all bacteria agents and it lasts for around 15 minutes before it's let down the sink to them to join the main sewage and how has the environmental protection agency been supervising the waste generated by the hospital samuel Teng is regional director we always um, look at some of the high risk activities like you are saying those that are likely to emit into the air or into water bodies those ones are constantly put on the satellite and we make sure that we we monitor them as quickly as possible the environmental protection agency also have a lab that regularly takes samples and checks not only on on, on uh, water quality we also do for air quality and at the same time, we also do for the noise, you understand? So particular reference to Konfanochi, we do the air quality. You know, they have a incinerator there. So around that area, we also do the air quality. Then we also take the water quality samples for analysis and, and those things. Most cases, you see, uh, the industry practice, where you see that the values are high or low, are uh, not meeting standards, you advise and you direct. Some that you can advise, if you look at the Environmental Protection Agency Act, he said when you identify something, you have to respond by writing to the agency, telling him or her what the offending activities, the steps that need to be taken to address the offending activity within a certain period. You know, some of, the, some of the issues cannot be addressed within a week or two. Some of them can take maybe months, and some of them can take maybe years, you understand? So depending on the issue, you tell them to do it as and when appropriate so that you'll be able to address most of the issues. But I think, um, I would say that Konfanoche is doing well, is doing well. In 2007, there was arrangement between Konfanoche Teaching Hospital and Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly to jointly finance the maintenance of the line. The contract document bearing KMA letterhead was awarded to Mercer's Environmental Engineering Limited. Around 2012, I think around 2012, the new, the then chief executive, Professor Henry J, also took the matter up and they wanted to, you know, pursue it. But it will interest you to know that it's not Confanoche alone that discharges its waste through that line. The NTC, as I indicated, the nurses training college and the the military, their hospital, their school, and their residential apartment, they all join in that sewage line. So, efforts are being made. The problem now is that our technical guys are advising that we need a biodigester at where it's truncated. The information I've gotten from our technical guys indicates that we've applied for a land from last commission around that area to construct that project but we are yet to get approval so they are still pursuing and the problem has to do with funding because as of 2007 the initial cost of the project to fix the sewage line was around 62,000 and out of it, that Kofanochi paid the 9,000 for the mobilization fund. So looking at then 
2008 to now the cost if we are to revisit it according to the documents cited by our team Kofanochi teaching hospital honored the spot payment but kma did not if you leave it to Kofanochi alone i think the cost is a capital intensive project and we alone cannot bear the cost as ghana attempts to curb antibiotics resistance pragmatic steps must be taken to block conduits which put citizens at risk. Environmental Protection Agency and the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly must involve stakeholders like Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Konfanochi Nursing and Midwifery College and 4BN Old Barracks on curbing this major source of antibiotics resistance. For Joy News Hotline Documentary, my name is Emmanuel Kwesi Debra.